Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship here at Evangel Church on this beautiful day and on this last Sunday in the year 2018. My name is Jim Klepper. I'm the Director of Education and the Good News Worship Service. It's my honor uh, to be with you here this morning. If you're visiting Evangel Church, we especially want to greet you and welcome you to Evangel. We want you to know that you are very special to us. You are a guest, and we're so delighted that you've chosen to be with us here today. We hope that everybody can stay for a moment or two after worship today. We'd love to greet you and meet you out in the lobby before you depart into the day. Just a few announcements this morning. Pastor Mark and Susan are away today. They are in Ohio visiting our relatives. And so let's be praying for Mark and Susan in uh, these days. And I believe he will be back in the office next Wednesday or Thursday. So we'll keep the Raiders in our prayers. Also, just a few other announcements. If you um, regularly give to the Ministry of Evangel Church, we just want to remind you that uh, if you want to get your pledges to be counted for this year, you need to have those in by December 31st to be t counted toward your 2018 giving. Also, we've rescheduled our Evangel Church Charge Conference, which is basically a once-a-year annual meeting, uh, which is going to be next Sunday, uh, June, or excuse me, January, I think it's the 5th or the 6th, uh, at 1145 a.m. after the second service. So you're all invited to that. This is usually led by the district superintendent, but that was canceled a few weeks ago due to weather. Um, so re uh, is rescheduled for uh, this coming Sunday uh, at 1145. Also, Evangel Winter Connect groups are coming. They are coming soon. Most of those will, some will start early in January and most of them will start mid-January. Uh, we're going to have several new classes. We're going to have one called My One Word. That's a repeat class from last year that was very popular at the start of a new year. That class is starting right away next Sunday. Uh, we're also going to have another class called Conquering Your Giants, kind of showing how, through the David and Goliath story, how we can conquer the giants that are in our lives. We're going to have lots of missional opportunities for at least three or four mission opportunities as part of Connect Groups this year. We have Let's Go to the Movies, which is a social group. And we're also going to have a one-night forum uh, probably in February, where we're going to meet uh, the new mayor of Rochester, Kim Norton, will be here. She's a Christian as well. We'll share her faith, and we'll also share her vision for our community, much like we did with our fire chief and our police chief this fall. So that's all coming up this winter. There's a display in the back today if you want to start signing up, checking out brochures. Otherwise, we're going to mail a brochure to you this coming week, and you will get it in the mail very, very soon. And then lastly, we have an EWAM coming up in January, on January 20th. EWAM stands for Evangel Worship and Mission. It's where we have worship and do a mission project all in the same day. That's coming up on January 20th. We're going to go do some painting over at Family Promise in Rochester. Family Promise serves the homeless in our community. They need some painting done. So we're going to do that. There is a sign-up uh, in the lobby today for that as well, and we hope that you will want to be a part of it. I believe that is all for our announcements this morning, so I will call our worship team forward, and we will begin our worship. Good morning. My name is Helen Duff, and I'll be your worship leader this morning. As you are able, please stand and join us in our singing. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and every Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens, the show. Jesus Christ is 
Jesus has come for us, and he is the hope for all of mankind. Rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. God, we are so thankful for the gift of Jesus that you gave to us. He was born so we can have everlasting life. No earthly present can ever match the love that you have for us. During this Christmas time, <clears throat> we know many have gathered with family and friends to enjoy exchanging gifts and sharing special memories. We also know that Jesus is the reason for this season. Help us to seek out the lost and the lonely who may not have a family and invite them into the family of God. Jesus did the very same thing, and that shows that all people matter to God. Finally, as we are on the verge of a new year, may we become a light to our city that reflects our love for Jesus. Strengthen our resolve to reach beyond this building and to gather your people with loving arms. In your name we pray. Amen. Righteousness, he humbled himself. 
for coming and saving. Each one of us now has that chance to be with you forever. And now as we prepare to take the offering, let these tokens that we bring forward be used as a blessing to our community and beyond. In your name we pray, amen. And children, there is children's church for you today if you would like to go back and Clancy will meet you. Our scripture today comes from Matthew uh, chapter 1, verse 21, and I'll be reading from the New International Version. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And then also from John chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, praise team. And good morning, friends. I hope that you have had a very blessed and Merry Christmas and are looking forward to a Happy New Year. And since we are almost ready to begin a new year, many of us will be turning to our 2019 calendars in the next day or two. New Year, new calendar. And you know, there are all sorts of calendars out there that we can turn to 
in addition to our phone, and many of them are themed to particular, or in some cases, peculiar interests. Like this one I just ran across recently. I don't know if you can see this, but this is the official 2019 cow yoga calendar. I mean, who thinks this stuff up? Cow is, cows in yoga poses for every month of the year. And they come with little quotes, too, on the cover. This cow kind of standing on its head, touching its feet together. It's a quote, actually, about faith. It says, faith consists in believing when it is beyond the power of reason to believe. Cow yoga calendars, utterly unbelievable. <laughs> I'm going to milk all the jokes I can out of this one. <laughs> Don't turn on me now. Don't turn on me. <laughs> Here's another one I ran across. And this one's very special to me because some of the calendars are themed toward people's passions. And one of my passions is baseball. This is the 2019 official Minnesota Twins calendar. And there's all sorts of useful information in this calendar, including past World Series champions. Um, there's lots of statistics in here, like a pitcher's ERA, which is earned run average. There's the runners in scoring position, RISP average in here. That means how well a batter does when there's runners in scoring positions. There's walks to strikeout, strikeout ratios. All sorts of essential information for life right in this catalog right here. And I kind of like the month of May this year. I'll tell you why. Let's see if I can find the month of May. I like the month of May because uh, Max Kepler is one of my favorite twins, and he's featured uh, in the month of May. And you know why Max Kepler is one of my favorite twins? If you say his name really fast, it kind of sounds like Jim Klepper. <laughs> Max Kepler, Jim Klepper. I've just made the big leagues. Okay, that's the Minnesota Twins calendar. i got one more here to show you. And this one's called A Dog Knows Best the 2019 calendar, and this also addresses one of my other passions, which is dogs, or cats, or pets of any kind. I'm a big dog guy. Jan Brunke uh, was kind enough to buy this one for me, and this one's really cool because it features close-up pictures of dogs. And you know, somebody really got me on this already, I'm telling you. I was opening it up, and I was looking at the first picture of this calendar, and they said, hey, you got, that's a mirrored calendar. I said, what do you mean a mirrored calendar? Then I looked at it, very, very funny. <laughs> I'll tell you what, everybody in Evangel United Methodist Church, and I mean everybody, thinks they're a comedian. <laughs> but it's a new year, and we turn to calendars and dates, and that got me to thinking. How did the calendar come to be? I mean, what's the history of the calendar? What's the history of time? being measured by the calendar that we use today. And as I got to th thinking about that, it spurred an idea for this message this morning. I started thinking about the person, the man who divided time, who divided history, and that would be Jesus. I mean, the most universally accepted calendar in the world today uses the abbreviations B.C., before Christ, and A.D., after death, to set this division in time in the history of the world. Why is this? So this is a two-part message this morning. In part one, we will look very, very briefly at the history of time, specifically the measurement tool we call the calendar. That's going to be the informational part of the message. And then in part two, the more important part of our time together today, we will focus on the man who divided time, the one who divided history, and that would be Jesus. And I hope that will be the inspirational part of our time together this morning. So to set the stage for Jesus, let's take a brief look at the history of time as recorded by our calendars that we use every day. The first thing we should know is that man is the one who developed the calendar. Our calendar is not anything instituted by God. It was developed and redeveloped and redeveloped and redeveloped, by the way, by man. So how did it all begin? We see the earliest times. Ancient man knew that there were two heavenly bodies that were regulated or at least systematically studied to determine time. One was the moon and one was the sun. And so there were lunar calendars for the moon and there was calendars based upon the sun, solar calendars. So 
So as far back as the Egyptians, ancient man determined time by counting the number of hours of daylight and the amount of dark, and they figured out that there were four points during the year where you could regulate time, which became known as the seasons. Now the problem was getting the lunar calendar to match up with the solar calendar. And there were several attempts to do this. First by the Romans. The Romans were the ones that actually came up with a 10-month calendar and named many of the months in our current calendar today. The problem was the year did not match up with the months. So in 46 BC, guess who came along to influence our current calendar? Julius Caesar, of all people. With the help of his astronomers in 46 BC, Julius Caesar said, we have to add two more months to the calendar. So they went from 10 months to 12 months. And more than that, they somehow figured out that an actual year was approximately 365 days and six hours. So they said, we have to add six hours a year, so after four years, guess what? We have to add one more day that particular year, which is known as leap year. Pretty smart. Now everything was rocking right along for a while, except did you know that a solar year is not exactly 365 days? And six hours? It's exactly 365 days, five hours, 48 minutes, and 12 seconds. You say 11 minutes, what's the big difference? Well, folks, you stretch 11 minutes over 15 centuries, and it makes a difference. The Romans' calendar got out of sync again. Before they realized it, Easter, which was set after the first full moon of the vernal equinox, was going to be celebrated at Christmas. Now, you can't be celebrating Easter at Christmas. And even before that, is your head spinning <laughs> right now? Mine was when I researched this for this message because I really don't know a vernal equinox from a tube of sports socks. But that 11-minute difference was messing things up. So anyway, the next big guy to come along was a fellow by the name of Pope Gregory. Long story short, and believe me, you do not want to hear how they figured out and calculated that 11-minute difference. But Gregory did it, and he got us back in sync again, and he instituted the calendar we have today, which is known as the Gregorian calendar. And that's how we arrived at our current date, and why December 31st, coming up tomorrow, is the last day of the year. Oh, but wait. What about this A.D. and B.C.? Where'd that come from? Well, in the year 532 A.D., this monk by the name of Dionysus, calculated A.D. He calculated the years and titled them A.D., which stands for Anno, Year of Domini, the Year of Our Lord. That's why we say 2018 A.D. But Dionysus didn't figure out B.C. B.C. was not done until 731 A.D. by another guy by the name of Beatty. He was called the Venerable Beatty because he was very, very intelligent. And he's the one who introduced B.C. before Christ. You know why they waited so long? Until then, they had no concept of negative numbers. They couldn't even conceive of going backwards in numbers until B.D. introduced it, but then he did. And folks, that's how we got our calendar. If you boil it all down, it's the process of man attempting to match months and years to the moon and the sun. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you Learn something about the calendar today. Raise your hand. Did you learn something? Okay. Put your hands down. I have another question. How many of you learned more than you wanted to hear about the calendar? Raise your hand. That's what I thought. <laughs> I appreciate your honesty. Well, that's the informational part of the message. The most important part of this message is what's coming up next. The inspirational part. Man developed the calendar, but history was divided by Jesus Christ. Now, this is key because throughout all of history, when mankind has been looking for an event to determine our historical dating, there is just one event that stands. The event is the coming of Jesus Christ to earth. The Romans calculated time partly off Easter. Dionysius calculated A.D. based on the death of Jesus. B.D. calculated B.C. based on the birth of Jesus. Even though there's a lot of secular historians over the years who have tried to change the abbreviations of B.C. and A.D. to things like 
BCE for Christian Area or BCE for Before Christian Area, whatever letters you put at the end of it, the numbering and the dating system of the modern world is still based today on the birth of Jesus Christ. And you cannot escape from it. The Greeks said, well, we're going to base time based on the Greek Olympiads. Well, that didn't work. The Romans said, well, we're going to date time from the date of the founding of the city of Rome. That didn't last. Even the French, at the end of the French Revolution, the 1700s, they said, well, we're going to have the dating system from the beginning of the French Revolution. And that only lasted about two or three years in France. But to this day, 2,000 years later, every time you write a check, you put a date down, every time you look at a calendar, every time you register any date for the day, you are acknowledging something that happened 2,018 years ago. That was the most significant event in history, the coming of Jesus Christ to this planet. And that is why I believe Jesus is the most significant man, and Jesus has the most significant mission And Jesus has the most significant message that the world has ever heard. And that's why we're going to talk today about Jesus, the man who divided history. First, Jesus is the most significant man, the most significant individual in history. We can see this in our first scripture text from this morning. That being Matthew 1, 21, in which an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. Joseph being the earthly father of Jesus. This angel came to visit Joseph. And the angel said, she, Mary, will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save the people from their sins. Jesus the man was significant with a capital S. Because Jesus came to save us from our sins. Parents are careful to choose good names for their children. But did you notice in our text today that Mary and Joseph did not choose Jesus' name? God chose that wonderful name and that beautiful name. And the name Jesus is a very simple, common name in biblical times. And it's original. It was pronounced Yahshua. Modern-day pronunciation would be Joshua. And the name Jesus literally means God saves. That's what his name means. You know, there are some hard-to-pronounce names in the Bible. Just go to 1 Chronicles, for instance, and start reading through that section of the Bible. It sounds like a Hebrew telephone book. But the name of Jesus is simple to pronounce. It's easy to sing about, too. We all love the song, Jesus Loves Me, don't we? Aren't you glad that God did not choose one of those hard-to-pronounce names, like one of the sons of Isaiah named Maher Shal Hashbaz? Could you imagine trying to sing, Mashallah Hashbaz loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Mother Hashbaz loves me. Yes, Mother Hashbaz loves me. Yes, Mother Hashbaz loves me. The Bible tells me so. Forget it. The angel said, you are to name this baby Jesus. The name Jesus is so simple, and it's so beautiful. Say it with me, would you? Jesus. Would you say it with me? Jesus. Let's say it again. Jesus. What a beautiful name. The angel said to call his name Jesus because his name means God saves. And that is what Jesus came to do. Jesus is the most significant man in history. Do you need a little more evidence about Jesus' significance? Then take a look at what the Bible says about the unique character of Jesus in 1 Timothy 2, verse 5a. It says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Do you know what that means? It means there is a God who is holy, and a God who is sinless. And it means then there is the rest of us who've made mistakes and who've messed up, and we're fallen and sinful human beings, and we cannot relate to God because God is holy, and we are sinful. And so the solution to all that was that God would send his son, Jesus, the God-man. He was all God, and he was all man, into this world at Christmas over 2,000 years ago to bridge that gap. The virgin birth of Jesus 
that we celebrated just this Christmas, just a few days ago, the virgin birth is not some incidental doctrine. It is essential doctrine to what we believe about the character of Christ because the father of Jesus was not Joseph or someone else. The father of Jesus was God and God alone. And the mother of Jesus was a woman. And so literally flowing through the veins and the body of Jesus Christ was the blood of God who has no blood and the blood of man. And because Jesus was God, he could reach up and take the hand of his holy father. Well, at the same time, he could reach down and take our hands, the hands that have messed up, the hands that have made mistakes, our sin-marred hands. He could take God's hand and he could take our hand and he could bring them together to bridge that gap to reconcile us to God. And he's the only one that could do that because there's never been another God-man. The Bible says there was one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. And that's what Jesus came to do. And that's what makes him different. And that's what makes him the most significant man in the history of the world. Throughout history, many men have done significant things. They've had missions, but nobody had a more significant mission than Jesus. No one. Let's look and see what Jesus said in his own words on why he came to the planet. We find it in Matthew 20, verse 28. Jesus says, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Now, we're going to concentrate on that word ransom for a moment because it speaks to Jesus' mission and his significance as the man that came to earth. Jesus said in his own words, I came to give my life as a ransom for many. Now, I think we all know what the word ransom means, don't we? Sometimes somebody might be kidnapped, and because that person who is kidnapped is very important to other people, the kidnappers will send a ransom note, and they'll say, if you pay a certain price, the individual who is important to you will be returned to you. You can buy them back if you have enough money, and if you can pay the ransom. And isn't it interesting that Jesus said in his own words, that's one of the reasons I came, to pay a ransom for your souls. I didn't say this, but somebody did was pretty smart. They said, Jesus didn't come to teach, although he did some great teaching, but that wasn't his purpose for coming. If he had come to teach, he would have established a university and lived to a ripe old age. Jesus didn't come to heal, although he healed many people. Had Jesus come primarily to heal, he would have established a hospital, and he would have lived to a ripe old age. Jesus didn't come to set up an ethical, moral system. If he had, he would have put on the robes of a judge and established a Supreme Court and lived to be a ripe old age. No, Jesus came to die. Now think about this with me. Do you know why God, who is spirit, put on human flesh in the person of Jesus 2,018 years ago as the Bethlehem baby? It was so he could die. God is spirit. But Jesus came down, the Bible says, and he put on human flesh, and he humbled himself. And the Bible says he became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And did you know, folks, by his death, he was paying our ransom? Here's a little story to help us, I hope, understand the mission of Jesus to give his life as a ransom for us. There was a little boy who built a sailboat. He made it all by himself. He glued the wood together and meticulously painted it. He set the mast and he cut the cloth for the sail. And when he was finished, he was so proud of that little boat that he built with his own hands. He took it down to the city park and he put it in the lake. He didn't even know if it would float. So he was pleased when it did. But not only did it float, the wind came up and caught that little sail and filled the boat, and that boat started sailing out into the lake. And the boat, boy was so happy, he goes, it works, it works. Until he realized that the boat 
went too far out for him to retrieve it. They kept going across the lake, so he ran around the lake as fast as he could to try to find his boat. When he got there, he couldn't find it. He spent all afternoon up and down the banks of that little lake trying to find his boat, but he couldn't find it. It was lost. He thought it must have sunk, so dejectedly he went home. A couple of days later, he was walking down a street in his neighborhood, and he happened to look in the window of a store, and guess what? He saw his boat. For sale, $20. He ran in there to the owner of the shop and said, My boat, my boat, I made it with my own hands. It's mine, it's mine. Where did you get it? He asked the shopkeeper. And the shopkeeper said, Well, a man sold it to me a few days ago. I don't know if I can believe you or not, son. But you can have it for $20. Well, the little boy said, Well, sir, I don't have $20, but if you'll put the boat under the counter and give me some time, I'll earn the money. And the shopkeeper agreed, and he put the boat under the counter. And so the little boy went out, and he raked leaves, and he hauled trash, and he turned bottles in for deposit. He did everything he could do until he had $20. And then he went back down to that store, and with that $20 clutched in his hand, he laid it on the counter, and the owner of that shop picked up that little boat behind the counter, and he handed it to him. The little boy took the boat and walked outside, and he looked at it, and he said, You're mine. You're twice mine, because I made you, and now I've bought you back. That's exactly what Jesus Christ has done for us. He looks at us, and he says, You're mine. You're twice mine. Because I made you, and when you were lost, and when you were wayward, and you were marred by sin, I paid a ransom for your soul. I bought you back. That's what Jesus did. And it's the greatest mission in the history of the world. Jesus Christ, the greatest man, with the greatest mission, and lastly, the greatest message in history. Jesus delivered a unique message that was revolutionary in the world, and you can find it in John 3, 14 through 16. You'll be familiar with the last verse, but maybe you've never tied the verses together. It reads, just as Moses lifted the snake in the desert, well, that's another whole story, a good one. But just as Moses lifted the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That means on a cross that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And here's the next verse. And this is Jesus speaking. And he said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever would believe in him would never die, but have everlasting life. I submit to you that there's never been a more important message that has ever come from human lips than that message right there. You see, what Jesus was saying, are you ready for this? There is a God. There is a great and glorious and omnipotent God who made everything, who with one word called the stars into existence. And this great God loves you very, very much, so much so that he wants to have a personal relationship with you. And this great God loves you, and he'll never stop loving you, even though he is holy and we are not. And the way you can come to know this God is through his son, Jesus Christ. And the way you can come through his son, Jesus Christ, is through his death on the cross. And that's the great message that Jesus shares. We are about to begin a new year. Time marches on. The calendar will turn the page at midnight tomorrow. And as it does, I hope you will take that moment in time and many more times throughout the year to look to Jesus, the greatest man with the greatest message and the greatest mission the world has ever seen, to look at Jesus, the man who divided history, to look at Jesus, the man, the God-man, who more than anything, as demonstrated by every single thing he did, is telling you more than anything else, he just wants you to be with him forever. Jesus, the man who divided history, 
He loves you so. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning as fragile vessels. Some of us are here today broken. Some of us are wounded. Some of us are hurting. Some of us are feeling abandoned. And then there's other of us here today, Lord, that feel we think we kind of have everything figured out. But Jesus, deep, deep down, we know we don't. What we really know is that we need you. We don't need religion. We don't need doctrine. We don't need a system. We don't need any of that as much as we need you, Jesus. We need a Savior. So, Lord Jesus, we ask you, come into our hearts and lives this morning, perhaps once again, perhaps for the very first time. Abide with us, reside with us. Jesus, just be our Lord. So in the quiet now we come, each one of us, privately and intimately. In the silence, Jesus, we lift our prayers up to you. Jesus, your name is simple, and your name is strong, and your name is saving, and your name is supreme. And now in this place, in each heart gathered here, may your name, Lord Jesus, also be praised as we put our trust and as we build our lives in you, as we give ourselves to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you holy there is no the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath that we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you you're holy and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes and
is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wander in. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. You are holy and there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my Would you please stand now for the blessing? Jesus, the greatest man with the greatest mission and the greatest message in the history of the world. Go now, build your life on his love. It is a firm foundation. Put your trust in him, in him alone. Jesus, he has always loved you and he always will. Amen.